thanks for coming to Tyra Online. If you've had a look at our other courses, you know that we talk about decision making, project management, and other ways to enable your organization to work strategically and successfully. It's all very practical, concrete stuff. This time we're going to talk about something that's the framework for all that. Governance. People may try to baffle you with jargon and make governance more complex than it needs to be. But it's about the stuff that underlies how we work together and get things done. I first started hearing the term in the 1990s, when I was in middle management in the public service. Like so many things, it was cloaked in the mystery of academia. Meanwhile, my colleagues and I were spending a lot of time working on how our organization was structured, how it communicated internally, and how it made decisions. Little did I know I was actually working on governance. But the concepts of governance apply to both the public and private worlds. Governments and companies. The common view of governance in the government world focuses on accountability to the taxpayer, transparent decision making, and ethical behavior. People think about responsibility and how elected officials behave. You'll have heard the term good governance, and we'll talk about that later. On the other hand, the common view of governance in the corporate world is that it's about structure, roles, and responsibilities communication and decision making, and that's true, but it's more than that, as we'll discuss. Companies that take the elements of governance for granted leave a lot of important stuff to chance. You'll see it in companies that started small and grew in size without changing how they manage themselves. Really, even they are dealing with governance, they just don't talk about it that way and may not have the resources to deal with it. We'll talk about this in more detail later, but for now, Let's acknowledge that clarity of roles, responsibilities, and authorities is the foundation of good governance. People who don't know if they have authority to do something are likely to hesitate to act, and that's unproductive. Worse, without proper definition of roles and responsibilities, people will tend to make assumptions, and those assumptions can lead to confusion, or worse, conflict. That sounds like business as usual in a lot of organizations, and that's why Stalky and Laughlin in Governance Matters talks about default governance. It's what happens when an organization doesn't think about governance. The lack of clarity can lead to conflict and wasted resources. A moment ago, I listed off what's commonly thought of as the important elements of governance in the corporate world. I'm going to add strategic direction. It's the why we do what we do. It's how an organization tests whether it's making the right decisions and structuring itself in the right way. We'll talk about that later too, and we'll give you a way to assess or establish your strategic direction. So, on one hand, we have organizations that undertake governance by default. And on the other hand, we're defining governance as a basic and very core part of being an organization. Over the next few modules, we'll build a practical understanding and application of governance for you and your organization, whether it's a for-profit or not-for-profit company, or a public agency. In the next module, we'll introduce you to some governance concepts that will put all this in context. See you there!